Hey, what's up everybody? Couch Cassidy here. Today, I wanna to talk to you guys about supination and how that relates to exercise selection and the way that you would approach training and techniques in training, and also just kind of clearing up some misunderstandings about what supination is and how much supination is good, etc. So let's just start off with a very simple thing. What is supination? Supination is where we are rotating the bones in the forearm, well, rotating the radius, the one that rotates, so that our palm ends up being up and our thumb is out. You can, you know, the way that a lot of people will try and remember this is that it's if you were trying to turn your hand into like a bowl of soup, right? That's supinated. Now, what's typically thought to be good is to be able to have supination that is essentially, you know, horizontal, you know, or it's like straight like this. And where people mistake that or they misunderstand that is that is in relationship to your humerus being straight up and down because it's how much your how much the forearm is rotating relative to the humerus. So the more like out to the side, the more abducted your arms are, the more this angle of your hand is going to look more vertical or angular and less parallel with the ground. So if you're trying to decide like if somebody actually lacks supination then you would actually need to look at how it relates to the form. Because if I just, if I just like bring my arms back to my side into an anatomical position, I have this, you know, I have this carrying angle and I have my shoulder going out a little bit because I got lats and triceps and stuff in here. So my arms don't rest straight up and down. So that means if I were to come in here and supinate, right, I am not going to be able to get parallel to the ground, but that doesn't mean that I am lacking supination. So if you if you were to just look at me, and you will see this, you know, even in physios or whatnot, to look at this and be like, oh, you need to train, you know, you lack supination, and maybe that's why you have elbow or shoulder pain, etc. And in reality, if I simply turn so that this is now straight up and down, you'll see I don't really lack supination, right? So in terms of my exercise selection and whatnot, I may need to make accommodations for my structure, but it's not because I lack supination. So I just want to put that out there in terms of like, because if, you know, if you find that like, okay, you know, straight bar curls don't work good for you, it's not because, it may not be because you have poor supination. It might just be because you're, and when you're in this position, your arms don't sit straight up and down. Your humeruses are not, humeruses, humeri? What's the plural of humeruses? But your humerus bones are not perpendicular to the ground. They're out at a bit of an angle, and that means your supination is therefore going to be at an angle. So that carries over to tons of exercise selection considerations and also just basic techniques. Now, the other thing with supination is, well, what does supination? And we have two major muscles that are going to contribute to supination. One is going to be the biceps because part of the bicep insertion actually comes into this, we call it the bicep aponeurosis, and it actually wraps around some of the superficial tissue of the forearm and that creates some supination but it only creates semi-supination. It does not take your arm into full supination. The muscle that takes you into full supination is the supinator. And the difference between those is the biceps, which does semi-supination. So basically, you know, if I just bring this to perspective, it's gonna bring me to about right here. That's not gonna be that 90 degrees, you know, or perpendicular relationship to the humerus. It's gonna be somewhere maybe where it's like 30 degrees off from being uh, perpendicular to the humerus. So that's going to be that semi-supinated and that's going to be as much supination as the biceps contribute. So if you try and go past that, you're kind of going against the mechanics of the biceps a little bit and you might actually be making that exercise worse by overemphasizing the amount of supination. The thing that does full supination, the supinator, is an elbow extensor. So it's not a very strong elbow extensor, but it does slightly contribute to the elbow extension and it would gain some length and flexion, some shortening and extension. So if you were going for full supination, it would not be via the bicep curl, it would actually be in some sort of like, you know, elbow extension motion. That's how you would really train the supinator in its fully short position. And, you know, conversely, if you were trying to fully lengthen it, it would be up in a in a flexion-based position. So if you are training supination, you would not do it in a curling motion. You would either do it in static motions or in an extension motion. And if you wanted to have supination as part of your bicep training, it wouldn't be full supination. It would be semi-supination. So let's look at a few things in terms of exercise consideration. So the first one is if I'm here, you know, and I'm, I'm just going to position my arms to do a barbell curl. 
even though I have plenty of supination, because my humerus is in an angle, that means my supination is now going to be in an angle. And that means an exercise like a barbell curl here is not going to fit me very well. So in order for me to get in here, I actually have to like kind of really wrench my shoulders in and I am over supinating. So I'm essentially past what the biceps would want to do to be able to do this motion. And that's one of the reasons that sometimes these motions just do not feel very comfortable at all. Like even though this isn't a tremendously light load for me, that exercise, that doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good on my elbows. It doesn't feel good on my wrists. It doesn't feel good on my shoulders. And you know, do I, do I feel the elbow flexors working? Well, obviously I'm lifting the bar. They're doing some work, but it's, I can tell that like, I'm not going to be able to push that exercise as much and I can feel it in my joints. I'm very perceptive of that. Now, if you got 20 year old joints, whatever you might do that. And you're, and, you know, you just don't have the training perception to know when something feels a little off. You might be able to do that and it's not like oh you're gonna have elbow pain next week but you know five ten years of training that may not have been a good option so from a results perspective you can be like well there's just better options and then from a you know injury prevention or just like longevity of joint health and whatnot you'd be like well if you are in a position where you can't just like get to a parallel to the floor position then the barbell is probably not going to be your best choice so what would be an alternative to that, okay, I have this bar here, this is called the easy bar. And what this does is, it, you know, it provides various grips and they will vary slightly between, you know, brands, both in the angle and the width. So what this does is now it has basically allowed me to do this motion in a semi supinated fashion. So in terms of feel and effort to like maintain this position, this is infinitely easier than the barbell. Now, I can tell you for me, if you look at my elbows, they're kind of going in and out. Um, this still isn't the best or most optimal motion, but it is a significant improvement over the straight barbell. The reason that it's not great yet is it's still pushing me into a fixed path. And if we were to look at what my natural arm path would be, it would be something like this if I position my shoulders as if I were doing a barbell curl. It has this wider and then coming in. So a better solution to just match my elbow joint, allow my humerus to stay still and allow me just to do a curling motion would be to use an exercise that matches whatever my natural arm path is. Now, the natural arm path will change as the shoulder position changes. So I could, if I wanted to, I could come out into like external rotation and I could do a curl out here and I can move pretty much straight up and down like parallel with gravity perpendicular to the ground here. And so that's an up and down motion. Now, obviously I couldn't do that with the barbell, but I could do that with a dumbbell. And instead of doing curls like this, they would actually look like they are going up and down. The other thing that I could do is, is I could come out into protraction and then that would allow me to position myself where now I could move in this plane. So let's, before I move to the dumbbell, let's see if I can redeem the easy bar curl here by coming into a bit of protraction. And then it's like, okay, now as I do this movement here, my elbows don't go in and out. I'm pretty much moving pretty close to the plane. If this could be just a tiny bit wider, that would be even better. Maybe if I can find a grip here, it's not perfect, but you know, kind of on the in-between of the two settings. So I can find a position where that's gonna feel pretty decent on my elbow, but it requires me to get into a different shoulder position than basically, you know, this like, you know, standing proud or anatomical position. Now, if we look at dumbbells, with a dumbbell, if I come into this position, I'm gonna have the same issue. This is that even with the weight of the dumbbell, it doesn't pull me in. So I have this, out and in motion. So I could do the same thing. I could come in here and I could do curls in this fashion. The nice thing is, is I can use whatever degree of supination I want with the dumbbell. I could also do this in external rotation and move in this plane. I could use a preacher branch or I could do single arm stuff where I actually lean so that one side is straight up and down. Those are all options to now, one, be able to use in a semi-supinated position, which is gonna be appropriate for the biceps, and be in a position where my upper arm can stay still and the motion is in the path of elbow flexion 
elbow extension for my structure. The third, and I would say the option that we use the most, is to use a cable because I can set a cable up, especially if I have two of them, to be able to do bilateral exercises and be able to match whatever shoulder position I want to work in. So if I wanted to work more in this position, I can have this cable up here and I can essentially semi-supinate that handle and then I can do bicep curls here. And this would be like, we would call like an omni bicep curl. It's gonna work both heads of the biceps and the bridge of us, uh, et cetera. But I could also just use a lower cable and I could go a little bit out to the side. And so I could have two of these like this, right? Or I could do the pronated thing and come in here as well. So we have more options, especially when it comes to doing things to arm and to side with the cable that can essentially be optimized to your individual structure. The dumbbell is gonna be the next best option. The easy bar would be a step down from that, but still significantly better than the barbell. And then when it comes to machines, you gotta look at each individual machine. The machines usually will have a fixed width, uh, but some of them do have handles that will go in and out. Uh, some of them handles where you can control the supination. So the more freedom a machine has, the more likely you're able to make it a little bit more optimal for your mechanics and a little bit more optimal for the elbow flexors that you wanna bias or train. So for instance, Prime makes one of their bicep curls, uh, the, the plate loaded one, you can get rotating cast handles attached to them. And I, I find that one good, but I still have to use a protracted shoulder position to be able to get my arms lined up this way because if I were to just get into the machine, which basically has a preacher bench and come in like this, I would still want to move this and the machine will not accommodate that motion. And then similarly, I think like Atlantis and Nautilus have some machines where you can set in like this and then do a curl this way, which is great if the machine's width has, happens to be like very close to what you need, but if it's a little off, you're still gonna end up then wanting to do it single arm because you're gonna feel like if it's too wide or it's too narrow, you're gonna feel like you wanna do this motion uh, instead of this motion. So with individual machines, you're gonna have to look at them, see how they fit you, and then just make the best out of what that offers. And whatever you can't get out of that, then make up with something like a cable or a dumbbell where you have that flexibility. And just be mindful of how much volume you put into exercises that don't quite work as well for your mechanics because that's the stuff that over time might cause you the niggles or whatever or give you a little pain or discomfort that's going to make you take either intensity away from your sessions volume away from your sessions or actually have to take a break from training those particular muscles altogether. so i hope that was helpful for any of you guys that had questions on you know supination how much supination is good versus bad and how you should integrate various amounts of supination into your elbow flexor training